All right, Panther fans, will you look at this collection? Just this, this is a beautiful thing. So when the Panthers the other day, I guess yesterday, named Paul Maurice their new head coach, and we still don't know what's going on with uh, Andrew Brunette, I thought, let's, let's get the gang together because this needs to be discussed. And the beautiful thing about it is – We've definitely have some differing opinions here. So this is going to be one of my favorite videos to make because I'm just going to get to sit back and watch. This is this is going to be beautiful. So I don't know how everybody is displaying out to you, but I'm it, this is like, what's that? The, the, the Brady Bunch? It kind of looks like the Brady Bunch a little bit here. So in the Penguins jersey, none other than one bad Steve. Okay, we've got Pam. Huge, huge, monumentally huge Panther fan who wanted to be in a couple of the other ones that we did, but this is the first time she's been able to make it because she's busy making puppies. We have the puppy man himself, Tim, who's up to five dogs, and uh, I'm sure that that number is going to increase at some point. Kirby, a new addition suggested by Tim, really huge Panther fan, really active on Twitter, has a lot of good takes. So they're so good even sometimes i agree with them so i'll tell you and uh of course jack we had to have jack on because jack is going to disagree with jeff and if you don't know who jeff is he's the guy dressed in the ratatouille costume so jeff and jack are the they are the main they are the heavyweight belt they are definitely on they are definitely at the top of the card so let's just go around the table i'll let you guys decide who wants to go first brunette out, kind of out. We're not sure. We don't know what he's doing. Maurice. So give me just a couple of minutes from everybody on your first initial thoughts on how this went. Well, can I start? Absolutely. Well, first of all, it was to me uh, a no brainer that Zita was going to replace uh, Bruno. Um, he didn't, he didn't choose Bruno. Uh, Bruno. Uh, he came into this. Uh, he's the architect of the team. If you want to call Talon the blueprint maker of the team, Bruno, uh, Bruno was not part of uh, what uh, Zito designed. So uh, Zito has the right to have his own picked coach. The NHL, unfortunately, re uh, replaced Q with someone. Uh, and um, uh, he, he, from the beginning, Zito labeled him interim, and that was the biggest clue that, uh, you know, he was going at the end of the year. Choose a, co a, a different coach unless something he ran deep. And Bruno didn't run deep. Bruno um, basically had the uh, team on autopilot, and understandably, under the circumstances, and we ran the season, and we made some great comebacks, not best defense, but great comebacks. I went to 38 of the 42 games. They were amazing and enjoyable. Um, but you could, we, you know, you could all tell this was not going to be a, a team that was built uh, uh, to go to the playoffs if they were going to play in that fashion. And he made, you know, absolutely, as we've talked about before, so I won't belabor it. Um, he made no adjustments. He didn't adjust the team for playoff style and uh, to his detriment. So uh, Bruno... Uh, it is invited back as as you know to I'm sh and I think he's going to end up staying but with that said we're talking about Maurice so I think out of the choices uh, I think Zito picked the best one possible for him I think he would have loved Q I think Q is going to sit one more year out that's just speculation I have no basis in fact I think the trots thing would have been very very cool but I from what I've heard read trots wanted uh, a more of a piece of a, you know, management uh, role. And that's not Zito. Zito has been doing overall, not perfect, but a, a great job. I think we'd all agree to that. Um, and Zito wanted to go out and choose his own coach. And Maurice uh, from the Remainer is a highly experienced uh, coach who uh, has run teams deep and, um, does he have his quirks and imperfections? And I'm sure there are fans of each of the teams he's coached that have learned to dislike him. As he said in the thing, as in his conference this morning, you know, he, he, he has an expiration date, like the, like a milk carton. And, you know, he runs a team for about four or five years and either they're successful to where he wants them to be or not. What I loved what he said today, and this was key to me, 
um, was a couple of sentences when he was clear that a team had that once they get into the playoffs, that's a different style and those changes have to be made. And if he works during the season, so they're prepared to make those changes and they have a few less points in the standings, it didn't sound like he gave a crap. It sounded like that was more important to him. Yep. So that was my takeaway. I like that. I like Zito got, gets to put his own mark on it. And uh, in some that uh, I'm as a season ticket holder, I'm a happy person. Excellent. Ratatouille, what you got? I can't breathe in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use lack of oxygen as an excuse for a bad take. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Like Go ahead. You may. We're going to do a face reveal here. Here we Here's go. Here's Jeff. There we go. All right. Oh, you got, you got the boy band haircut and everything. All right. I barely have it. It's falling out back. <laughs> you have barely. I'm have gonna look haircut. like you in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I don't think. I don't think you're 20 years old. Yeah, the suit right? on. I'm 39. No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm only. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I'm not 20. But that's okay. All right. So disagree. Old enough. Disagree with Jack. Old enough to know better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I liked a lot of the things that he said, but I've liked a lot of the things that every coach that's getting brought into a new team says. They don't come in and say, yeah, I'm going to suck and kind of just take all the money <laughs> and you know, whatever. And, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to make changes because obviously what was happening before wasn't working. I brought notes. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> notes and a tie. This is, this is, this is a high-class show, people. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> so, in one year, not even a full year, freaking uh, uh, Brunette brought the first President's Trophy that we had, obviously, got us past the first round, something we haven't done in 26 years because mm. we can't stop freaking hearing about 1996. That's cool, you know. This is our third straight coach that was a Jack Adams finalist that we've showed the door. Well, kind of Q yeah. kind of left of his own volition. Sure. Uh, but so now we've got Maurice. When there were other coaches out there that we could have gotten that actually have won something. Maurice has just as much winning experience as we do. He's coached 1,684 games from 1995 to 2022. 775 wins, as Jameson Olive said earlier, is the seventh most in history. His 680 regulation losses is the first most in history. 130 losses in overtime. So he's got 810 losses to go with his 775 wins wow he has no cups he's been fired twice he walked away once he coached for the whalers canes leafs jets he's played 92 games in the playoffs he's 41 and 51 he's got less than 500 average winning games in the playoffs which you know we wanted a guy with experience he's got just the kind of experience for our team he loses 446 (laughs) winning percentage he was the eastern conference champ in 2001 that's also the last time he finished first that was let's see when when that happened 21 years ago barkov and ekblad were five years old huberto was eight years old so this is the guy coach number seven or eight for our core is going to come in he said all the right things now, as a fan, all we can do is sit back and go, fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> to believe that that's going to happen this time, as opposed to all the other times, we've had, what, uh, 18, 20 coaches, something like that. It's and Barkov and Huberto yeah. have played for half of them. Right. It's, 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 it's getting ridiculous. It, the only thing that's been consistent so far since – you know, Doug and Vinny bought the team is that they're willing to spend. So right. now they're spending more for a coach who's proven to not be very proven. <laughs> I hope it works. 
I would love it if we, you know, come in first or second. I don't think we're going to get a president's trophy. No. And if he doesn't make this amazing adjustment that's going to happen on the power play that everybody keeps talking about, that's the whole reason why Bruno was fired because of that power play. I was in the arena when they scored their one goal and the players were mic'd up talking to each other saying, Oh, the floodgates are going to open now. The floodgate is that a titty bar in Tampa? Cause that's the <laughs> only place that they actually flooded into. I, Sorry, I'd love to believe you, but I've been a fan since 93, just like all you guys. And well, not one bad Steve. Obviously, he's a Penguins fan. Look at look at that. That's a party foul right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey Jeff, I like your stats, first love. but uh Penguins were my first on. love, but I moved on um to where we're at now. So <laughs> Jeff, I love your stats, but you should know we don't care about stats on this channel. How do you feel? How do I what feel? Do I say. My, yeah, we don't, I, we don't care about stats. My, my heart tells me this is a lateral move. This is a panic thing. <laughs> we made a move to make a move. I'm not saying he can't win. I'm not saying they won't win. I'm saying this makes no goddamn sense because this is not the first time we've shit out a great, I mean, all I, we're always going to get laughed at by other fan bases and other fan media and shit like that they're they're looking at us and saying this is the third jack adams coach in a row finalist that we've just get him a cab get him out of here I, but we keep guys around from like tom Rowe, peter horchek mm. great guys Deneen, great dallas <laughs> dallas right timmy's <laughs> favorite boogner. Head, dallas <laughs> oh boogner all right so um Pam, why don't you get? Why don't you, don't you go? Say oh, are you not done? Are you, you we want don't more? say that name. We don't say Boogner. Oh yeah, <laughs> no. We don't know his uh, name is Boner. Before we press, search it up. All he wants his name was Boner. I like Jeff, Timmy's better. That's Bob Boogner, bro. That's his name. There you go. <laughs> the Ham Boogner. Before we go on, Jeff, who did you want? Like, what did you want to happen? What did I want to happen? Yeah, I would have been fine with either just removing the interim tag or trots. But if trots didn't want to come here, that's fine. The only explanation for taking the guy we took is that, uh, you know, Bruno didn't want the job. Right. And I've seen conflicting reports saying over and over again that he's been offered a job to stay. Well, if you didn't, if you didn't want the job, why would you stay? Because they're not going to let you in the front office. We've we've got 375 people in the front office. <laughs> right. Luongo's brother is in our fucking front office. <laughs> I'll be in their front office next year. Well, Let's we all it. know I'm not going to be in the front office, so we're we're safe there. That's for sure. Yeah, they need to <laughs> Thank God. So oh, all right, Pam, what you got for us? Uh, I actually agree a lot with Jeff. Um, Smart move. I, right. That's why we get along. Uh, I was fully in the keep Bruno corner. Uh, did he choke some in the playoffs? Absolutely. Yes, he did. I, but he owned up to it. I agree with it, with all of that. But at the same time, I blame the players too. Listen, our guys did not show the fuck, excuse me, show up against Tampa. They just didn't, period. Right. And I think also that Zito kept, I think Zito knew the day after we lost that he was not going to retain Bruno and he dipped him around for a month. I don't like that. Hmm. I get that it's his job to put the team first and their needs first, but there's no way you can convince me that he seriously had any intention of hiring Bruno. I think mm. that we would have been better off if he just admitted that right afterwards and gone after, personally, I would have rather had Cassidy. That's just my personal opinion. At the same time, I'm just happy we don't have DeBoer or Tort. <laughs> no, like <laughs> I don't think I could handle either one of those <clears throat> you know DeBoer 2.0 ain't happening right. and I just can't stand towards 
we would have had to like get rid of half our team because <laughs> they played for him already and didn't like him. Right. <laughs> um, so I didn't think that that was fair. Um, but I get it from a business standpoint. But I'm not a huge fan of Maurice. I'm sorry. I just, I feel that Bruno's a smart guy. He was a smart player. He would have figured it out. I agree with Jeff in that I see it as a lateral move. And I don't give a crap how classy it's supposed to have been that he decided that he wasn't the right voice for the team in Winnipeg. It's bullshit. That's a quitter. I, that My personal Quit opinion it. is that's quitting on the team. Period. End of story. <laughs> All right. I'll be the hard ass today, guys. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right, Kirby, what you got? Yeah, um, I don't know. I think I'm in the different camp, and I've seen that on Twitter and things that I've seen. I, I'm really close in the market to Paul Maurice <laughs> Canada, so I've heard his press conferences for years and years. Um, I felt like as the offseason went along, just to hit on Bruno a bit here, I was like 60% on bringing him back. I and, and I think, Timmy, we've talked about this a lot in our spaces during the playoffs. I said, if we get through the first round and we have a really competitive second round against either Tampa Bay or Toronto – I think Brunette is sealed in coming back. I said, with the only caveat, if we show up against Tampa Bay and Toronto and look nothing like we did last year in the playoffs, I feel some of that Coach Q magic pixie dust has worn off. And Bruno has been carrying that system through with Quinville the, the, for this entire season, and it's starting to wear off. And that was my indication as the season ended. I felt like um, uh, like Pam mentioned, kind of leaving them out there to drift away in the wind. We're doing kind of phone interviews. We're kind of skirting around potentially a new coach. Um, I felt like my odds at that point were like a coin flip. Um, I, I'm like, okay, what are our candidates here? My candidates were like Barry Trotz and no one else. Right. But as this process started to go along, we started to learn Bruce Cassidy, like he was signed. I don't know if we had a legitimate shot at him. I don't know if it's one of the, the guys that we actually like were interviewing for that position. So I think this is when Maurice and other names started to pop, to pop into the fold here. And um, uh Again, um, I think Jeff was mentioning a lot of things from Maurice's past. I also look at his winning percentage with the Winnipeg Jets was 58% winning points percentage. He had a 100-point season, 90-point season, 80-point season. And I think Timmy agrees with me on this point. He's never been assembled this type of talent on paper before. Yes, the Winnipeg Jets have done well. But how many free agents go to Winnipeg? How many big blockbuster moves go there? Just look at the Panthers, who we have never been that desirable of a location, have got Bob Roski, Reinhardt, even Bennett, whose stock was low, but then elevated his play with us, um, bringing in guys like Duclair and, and Verhege. Those are under the radar moves, but those moves really like turn into fruition for us as well. So I just think the Jets, a lot of what Maurice has handed to him is, is from the draft. And I used a, a fun analogy the other night. I want to mention this on your podcast. I think Maurice is getting a lot of heat. And you got to look at the GMs he had. John Ferguson Jr. with the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is one of the worst GMs in the last 30 years in the league. There's players that talk up here publicly on national television still slamming that man oh. for him being GM for them, Jeff O'Neill being one. So um, they're, they're, he didn't have any respect. Um, Kevin Sheveldayoff, I think he's a decent general manager, but he's like, if, if you guys play poker, he's like a guy that when you're going to a friend's house and you're just playing a $20 poker game, $40 game, just not, it's not much on the line. And he's you're never playing been to the video 40... room. <laughs> Be what? Sorry. <laughs> Said he's never been to the video room. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, so you're playing poker with this group of like eight people and Kevin Shevel day off. He's sitting, he's one of the guys sitting at the table with you and you know, 30 minutes passes by 45 minutes passes by an hour and a half. And you're just having fun. You're playing a few hands, chilling. And you look at Kevin and you're like, are you even in this game? You're just folding every hand here. Like, like, are you playing? Or are you just here to entertain? Because Kevin Shevel day off has only gone in on the jets two out of maybe eight seasons. One of their biggest moves was Paul Stastny at the deadline, which is when they went to the Western conference finals. So I don't think he's ever been equipped with a GM like Bill Zito who went in this year and added guys like Giroux. Everyone is kind of mixed feelings on a guy like Ben Sherratt, but he went in on players. Um, and that's something we've always wanted as the fan base. And we finally have had this now in Florida in the last couple of years. And I just don't think Kevin Shevel, they have ever utilized him with the biggest weapons. He always st stood pat at trade deadlines. He didn't give them those tools to, to operate. And I know Jeff mentioned the playoff record. That doesn't look great, but um, I think like 
Paul Maurice has had a lot of great regular seasons. I think it is a wait and see move. I'm not like ultra positive on it, but I think that like um, we, it's a wait and see, but it's also a coach coming into a win now window. And I liked in that press conference today too, Jaws, that he was like, you know, coaches, I think he said the six, they have a six year expiry date, but yeah. I'm even thinking with him, it's a one to three year window with this group. And I think he's fine with that at the end of the day. So I know Pam said he quit, but I also think he's transparent in that meeting today, which not a lot of coaches are. And he's saying like, if I don't get the job done, I'm not here no more. And I don't think you hear that a lot with new head coaches coming in. So I think he's, he's talked to Zito. They've really expressed that to him. And, um, you know, I'm looking at as cautiously optimistic. And I think as the season goes along, it doesn't matter where we finish in the standings. I don't care if we don't get a president's cup, look at the Tampa Bay this year. Everyone thought, Oh, their run is over. And they're currently playing the Stanley cup final, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They didn't care about the regular season. They just cared about the playoffs. So I think that's like the mindset and mentality for Florida to go into next season. And, um, you know, in this Atlantic division. Okay, cool. Timmy. Oh, oh man. Good morning, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not wrong. Oh, man. Uh, there's a lot to say, man. It, it, I said it on the spaces that we had yesterday, but I'm very, I'm very like pro Zito, right? Like everyone, like at the end of the day, Zito has, hasn't really let like Panther fans down. Like every single move the guy makes, we all question it. Like Sam Bennett, why? I um Ben Sherratt. I, mean, why? I was a Bennett fan. <laughs> well, I, I like Sam Bennett too personally, but like there was just so much of like just just like questioning his his moves. Like why is he doing things? And every one of them outside of Sherratt, you know, what I mean, I, I was I love Sherratt. I know you Jaws, you and Stu love Sherratt. You guys want to bring him back? Um, oh. <clears throat> and. And that's that's a that's a story for another day. I personally didn't mind his game, but just that's for me personally. I'm I'm very like every it seems like every single move he makes, we all question it. And like, you know, ten months go by, and we're like, what what are we doing? Like, why 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 are we dumb enough to question Bill Zito? Right. So that I feel like that always happens, and it's there's always perfect. like the little thing online of like trust Zito, we trust Zito, we trust Zito. So that's kind of what I'm sticking to that script of like. I don't know too much about like what Kirby just mentioned, the GMs and all that. I don't know enough about Winnipeg's history to even know too much about that. But I, but like Kirby was saying, I will say that he's an experienced coach and he hasn't had a team like this. And if what Kirby is saying is true, and I guess you, you as a hockey fan, you do kind of think of it like, wow, who, who really does go to Winnipeg? When's the last time they had like a, a major trade outside of what the, the Andrew Ladd spectacle that was years ago? That's the only time I can just off the top of my head even think about them remotely being in any type of thirty-seven. Right. Who? That's the only, That's literally the only time I can think about them being in anything. And then Patrick Liney, of course. But like, yeah. I, you know what I mean? So if this guy, I, I don't know the Trot stuff. I don't know what happened there. From what I saw online, it was just Trot didn't want to disrespect Bruno because he was friends with him. I, I don't know. I don't even know what to believe there. If he didn't want to mm-hmm. come there eyes were just set on Winnipeg so be it I don't think Florida rushed into this I, I like how they took their time they didn't just go and get a new coach I think if Bruno time, did yeah. make the finals I do think that maybe they brought him back but I don't I think just I think I honestly think the moment that they went to six games I think Zito was just like yeah no like there was no reason why should we should have even gone to six and I think he was right. just jumping like right, right. not even about the power play. I just think the fact that we, cause you got to remember like Bruton, you got to think Bill Zito's over here watching Colorado beat the shit out of who the, whoever they played in the first round swept them. And everyone had us with Colorado all season. Like right. we're, it's just Florida and Colorado. It's all you ever hear about. When you're what, you know, Bill Zito's watching um, Colorado absolutely trash. Uh, whoever I think they it was, were. It was, I think it was Nashville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Right. Sweep Seattle's uh, undefeated against us. <laughs> That's not wrong. <laughs> Good thing we didn't have to play them, right? And then you got us. We're over here struggling against Washington. I mean, granted, I know Washington had 100 points, and they're a little bit better than where Nashville is, but you kind of see that, and you're like, yeah, I know. Like, 
I, I just, I can't have this. You know I what I mean? Like, right. It wasn't just the power play, Timmy. I think that's that you hit on that too. Um, just how we played throughout the playoffs. Pam mentioned in the second round, the first round was very concerning to me. Like, um, right. being down in games, they're, they're clogging up the neutral zone. Everyone's like, well, next series, that'll change because we're not going to play against a one, three, one. We're going to play against Tampa that we're familiar with. And still, it was still, it still looked the same, not to right. mention just the power play, but five on five and bad starts, you know, and that's on the coach, bad starts and stuff like that too. And that was, that's Kirby, what I, mean by Kirby, I bet you'll agree that, you know, if we're not winning the two minute wars, you know, that's just going to make everything just almost impossible. And when we played the caps, you know, we, we were on that zero for ever uh, uh, power play. Uh, uh, shut yeah. up. So, I mean, that just makes, that makes it such an uphill battle, which we completed against the caps. But exactly to your point, a, a series that should have went four, maybe five yeah. games, ended up, uh, you know, being six. That's uh, what I mean. Zito's watching this. He, he's watching the Avs beat the shit out of uh, Nashville, and he's thinking this should be us. We should and be. Bob was on the top of the game, fun. which we didn't even expect as long as yeah. a general yeah. Yeah. So if, right. we were 20, if, we, right? if we were 20 to 25 percent on the power play, which is not asking an incredible amount, we would have swept the caps. Yeah. But yeah. Many, and we were, do we're, people blame the players part of that? I mean, it, they're the five guys, they're we the were, guys we were on the ice. No, I'm going down three one. We were not close. <laughs> I understand it, he wasn't. Yeah. He didn't coach great, but it, I never hear anybody put any blame on the guys that were on the ice. They well, while I don't know, we we can get into some names here. Yeah, um, but, but all, I of want, them, all of them. All of them. The guy on your jersey behind your back. Uh, him too. For him two too. <laughs> he he uh, but but Pam, it's up to the coach to after a few play after a few power plays to say, well, this guy on the half wall not shooting and doing the same cross scene pass over and over again right. that my I agree with you. Would see I, I agree That's with you on the coach to move. Oh, I, I agree it. with that <laughs> on the coaching side. Yeah, Bruno. Lack of adjustment. I get it. Late, exactly. Late. I and I who, appreciate that. Who is he going to but, adjust to? But at the well, same time, when we played Tampa, guys out there got to play. When no, we played Tampa, not. they didn't have Braden Point, but we played <laughs> without cares? Barkov, Huberto, and Ekblad. Jeff, exactly. how about putting Thank Jeff? You. How about putting Hornquist, a seasoned guy who gets paid millions just for what he does on the power play, his successes, instead of playing in second PP two. For, for the entire capital series with a total of 15 to 20 seconds. How about after you see that Huberto no. is failing, you try to move him up in game two or game three. It's not rocket science. And, and we not have the player as the trigger man. Not, not rocket surgery. The trigger man and play Verhege, who's having a white hot series right. and like put him on the power. Play. And okay. just like Jack said, so, it, like do Bruno something. Bruno walks into the locker room. He says, the power play is not working. Let's get rid of Ekblad, Barkov, and Huberto, and let's put Patrick Hornquist in there instead. Does that make a message if you sit that, them for like a period on the power play? You sit all three of those for guys? a period. Yeah, well, they, mi a they missed a lot more than a period. No, but sit and them. Those guys had what three. four points between them. Oh, but Bruno to sit them on the power play. He didn't sit those three. Or he even doesn't like have anybody to replace them. Hornquist, really? the team that scored the most really? goals since ninety six. Yeah. You didn't have any guys in Verhagen. How do you not play Hornquist, Hornquist? PP1? This is how Hornquist has made millions and brought two cups to the paint. One bad steal. Uh, North Nashville. A Penguin fan. You got Sam Bennett. I'm not a Penguins <laughs> fan. I just like crying. No. <laughs> All right, let's let's like let's the let's worst let, penguin. Let's worst. let Steve answer the question about Maurice. At least get a Lemieux jersey. And, and, and then I want to <laughs> answer the couple of questions that you guys had about the the power play. Well, let Steve get his words in about Maurice first, and then I'll flip back to that. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Look what you started, Timmy. This is all your fault. <laughs> um, I want to say immaculate vibes, right? But um, I'm more I'm more leaning towards kind of like Jeff in this whole debate. Smart I know man. you guys didn't really get to hear everyone go, but I mean, I've heard everyone here talk, so um, I can kind of feed off of that. Um, I, I don't think Maurice was the greatest decision in the world. Um, and I don't think anyone here is going to debate that fact. Um, I mean, he's, he's got, he's got a losing record. Like that just, that sticks out to me. Um, something that does also stick out to me is kind of what Kirby was saying. Um, let me start with this. So um, I'm not actually a Penguins fan. I just, I, I like one player on like each team 
And like, and I just watch just you. them when I watch the, the team, right? Like Pat Maroon is my Tampa Bay player. I really like Pat Maroon. I know what everyone can hate him. Oh, Get this guy out of here. What? Take him. The way he plays Jaws. the puck. Jaws, we need to mute somebody. somebody. No, 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 no. We got a pig rig now. fan here. <laughs> like he's he's a very intelligent player, just, but he seems like an idiot, which is why I like. Him. I just listened to him um, in an interview about tw- about twenty minutes ago before we went live here, and I couldn't believe I was listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's got a good hockey IQ. Something Uyghur doesn't have, apparently, according to everyone else. Oh, no, he's boy. got retarded luck. <laughs> anyway, started watching hockey religiously about three years ago. Um, I got stationed in this location. There's literally nothing to do here, so like you know, at nine o'clock at night, I'm probably watching Calgary versus Edmonton, right? Um, trying to learn a lot about the game. Uh, I'm going to let you know right now, I can name a lot of players on almost every roster, but I cannot name more than like two people on basically Winnipeg. Now, now what does that mean? I mean, he's made, he's made the playoffs like the last two four or five seasons, uh, like Shifley and the bar or whatever. Like those are like the only two that I know that are even on that team. So like, it'd be interesting to see what he can do with a team full of superstars. However, um, it just kind of, it kind of irks me. Cause it's like, um, it, like, like Jeff was saying, it feels like kind of like a lateral move. It, do, it doesn't feel like Bruno couldn't do this. Timmy now, said I, he can make the playoffs with this roster. So if, if well, Paulie boy, I mean, Eric says it. he can win the president's trophy with his dog. Like, Fluffy could coach this team to 130 points. I, 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 I still stand on that. I mean, I mean, he, he got handed. He literally didn't have to do very much. The team was already stacked. Dome, Timmy. So well, I will, I will disagree them. with the power play logic. Um, in just my opinion, right? Um, I don't think an inability to do something uh, sort sort of warrants just not doing anything, right? Like, yeah, it's thinks that you know Barkov's a ghost. He's always a ghost. Huberto didn't show up. Um, Huberto actually eventually overtook Uyghur for turnovers. Um, bet you guys didn't know that. Thank yeah. you, playoffs. Um, <laughs> Here's the stats for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll give Barkov in for the doubt because he Barkov does play defense. When you go one in twenty eight, you don't deserve your job. I'm sorry, you, it's it's what? like inexcusable. Sure. Um, there's things you can pick and point like 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 Pamela was saying. You, you got to hold the players accountable. I mean, <clears throat> how many times do I need to curse out Barkov on this damn podcast? Like, right. <laughs> Right. You know, well, we, we keep even this. said afterwards that he wasn't injured. Wasn't he just injured. should have played better. He's right. not injured. Okay, so how come we're not getting rid of him? I was, I was more mad. Only, I was more mad It's, it's the just a scapegoat down. situation. That's Uyghur's money. Come on. But come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, who's, Jeff, who's the scapegoat? Huberto yeah, or, or, or the coach? Who, who no, the coach. Coming? That's it. He's you the one that, that didn't th- make th- the adjustments. Right. You think he was okay? Did you think it's okay in a Stanley Cup run with a team that is supposed to go deep, that he sat there for two rounds and made no adjustments through an 0 for 29 run. You're okay with that, and you would hand him the keys again next year? Absolutely, because he, he admitted that he made the mistake. Okay, but he starts slow, 10, 15 games. Do you fire him then? And then which coaches are available? Because there's a lot like likely chance that Brunette starts slow, then Paul Marie starts slow. Well, it doesn't matter if we start slow because Timmy's dog could win the playoffs with this <laughs> roster, right? So we blame the players, right? What system is he some running? Play, some Probably players running are blame, system but the, this is system number eight for them. Uh-oh. Blame him. Showing I us like some looking over there, Jack. It's not chewing gum. It's gonna be nice when I don't have to do so, that anymore. So Dad, I have a take, hiking, buddy. <laughs> I have a take. <laughs> And I kind of base this upon a little bit of what I saw, the difference in Huberto, his his mannerisms, the whole you know, who cares, the difference oh between God, this year and last season. Wanted to punch and I face. believe, I believe that yes, the players are accountable, no, but I, I I also believe that. Some of what we saw on the ice was the players not buying whatever Brunette was selling. Because when you get to the, when you start the second round against Tampa, I I mean, we were all shocked. It's like, wait, it's the same power play guys. And he's saying, we're going to stick to it. We're going to stick to it. Now I get the whole argument that 
you know, it's up to the players to get up to play. Right. Right. Not, you know, you, every once in a while you can give the pregame speech and get the guys riled up and all of that. But the for the most part, of diplomacy, <laughs> for most part, the players have to do it themselves. I, I personally think that the reactions that we saw specifically from Huberto was him not buying Burnett. And I think he didn't buy himself. I, well, that, I, that, I, I that, disagree. I don't think how, how do guys just all of a sudden in the playoffs after having that fabulous best regular season ever, they didn't just decide once, the, once the playoffs started that, that they're not buying in. I don't Come think that it looked know, like dog shit against the Bobrovsky. They, they didn't all show up except Verhegi and Bobrovsky. Like, why? Yeah, but I don't the- think my point is that I don't, I just blame the players more. I, I, at the end of the day, through this playoff process, these guys need an I don't even know what you would call it. They need to learn how to tip better. At take the it to another level. You're right about something. the players, Pam. You're, you're 100% correct about the players, right. but here's the thing. Here's where coaching comes in handy. They the did coaching, this shit the under Q. The coaches didn't hold them anybody did accountable, though. But the players, the players it to coaches uh, over and over and over again. Who just said that? Again. Who just uh, said the, the, the players the didn't play, hold the players the accountable? Players should same group, that 100%. our same Timmy core. Did. Are the that same group of guys the that are getting coaches the players fired? Players the bed, but but that, as you're telling them, you, coach, you, them? you like, should be telling you, you should be telling the players, hey, like clearly you guys are sucking. Get the hell out of the game. Like you're right. The players. I, I'm all are, for that. That's what I that's would what do that. I that's would awesome. sit somebody. That, that's why, that's Pam, why we're mad at Bruno. We're, we're mad at Bruno <laughs> because Bruno broken. allowed it. Bruno allowed three goals to be scored against Tampa. T- Bruno made no adjustments. Nothing. Regardless, but, he, he had plenty of depth to work with. He just he just didn't use it. It took him three games to put in Maxine Mammon. How took him three games. He put he in take... his best players. Yes, he, he did. was our best player. He didn't hold nobody accountable. I just think that, you, never I just think that there's plenty of room. Oh, sure. There's plenty of blame to go around. You I are, just think but, that we didn't lose. But – what do you do then, Pam? Just because of Bruno. We didn't do that. Never, well, it's, it's, it's never, it's never, it's what do you never. do? You bring Bruno back and you bring the whole core back? What does that say? If you're saying it's the players, then one of those core three have to be moved. Huber I, I would move somebody. I don't. I have no problem moving somebody. You know, the it thing of it is. was happy when they traded Trocek for trying out loud because they needed to make a point. And Quinville, he didn't fit in with Quinville. No. Here, you here's, here's, here's another angle. Remember when we were talking about Paul Maurice? Here, here, here's another angle. Without Eggblad, Drew, Reinhardt, Sherratt, and with lousy goaltending, we took Tampa to six hard games with Q. And you right. add in all of those players and goal and Bob playing outstanding, and we got friggin' swept. How many it was were the here? Same system. How many were live at the game but, for but, game one versus Tampa? How many were, were were there? Not this year, last year. Alive? I think we're all live. One of the best no, playoff the, games of last year. At the game. same live. Live at the game. <laughs> it was. I the, wish, but no, I wasn't there. I was. I the lost I'm, I'm sure it was felt. I'm sure it was felt through the TV. And and as the old man in the group, I've been to you know 50 years of hockey games, including the '94 Ranger run. And I will tell you that was the most intense game, and oh, that yeah. was and that was Q. He was not putting up with a lack of intensity, and there that just was not even close to matched in in, in either series. We didn't so to the Pam's point, felt like regular the Pam, season. Yeah, to Pam's game. point, they were you know the, the players need to be held accountable, but that Pam is the coach's job to I hold them the accountable and I simply think, direct. I simply agree, but I also that. think that in today's sports these players and i say this for all sports not just hockey coaching isn't really everything the players have to be able to take ownership of it you know and and 
go the extra mile and do the extra thing or do whatever it is that they need to do. And I think there's a problem with our team that they're soft. They don't, and it's not just been with Bruno. It's been with previous coaches. It, to me, it's been a problem for as long as we've had this core. The I don't think it was. Yeah, thank, was thank you, thank you, Jeff. Last, like, <laughs> did you think this, 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 the, 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 I mean, the, they didn't. They we didn't we haven't looked good. I mean, let's put it this way: put Gerard. If Gerard Gallant doesn't get fired and has this core, the the effort and the intensity that we had out of that group of guys, you saw it with the Rangers. And look, Pam, I, I get it, right? I, I, and Jeff, I, I get it. Good. Then Wanting to give Brunette another, another shot. But the, 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 the thing is for me anyway, is that you're, you're not going to give them a one-year deal. Right. So to me, if you, if you give them, you're going to give them three years. Okay. So if he's not the guy, now you're in this position where, you I have to make I'll another four million dollar a year job too if i'm not very good at it <laughs> what's that I said i promise i'll quit my four million a dollar four million dollar a year job too well look i guess what i'm saying is that is that i i think there's less room for regret when you hire a guy like maurice than there is when you're going to roll the dice that brunette's going to learn in time for this core. rolling the dice I... So we, what do, everyone thinks that guy, he's not even been a head coach. What's that, Kirby? Now he's been a head coach. He doesn't might not even want to be a head coach. He might want to work in management. He might want to right. be associate head coach. He might want to be assistant coach. He doesn't even know what he wants. Right, and to, to Kirby's point, that is what Bruno said. He said in the in his exit interview, he needed to talk to his family, you know, because it's a huge commitment and everything. And the other the other thing is, and I know it's just a press conference. I I, I grasp that, but. <clears throat> Just comparing the two, I mean, Burnett talking about he was grateful to have the job and he's learning as he goes and it's the learning process. But Maurice, he should have I mean, he, he didn't now. just say the right things. I don't care who was saying it. He, right. got, he gets it. He gets it. It's the play without the puck. It's it's learning a different style for the playoffs. Did, if Burnett had said those talk, things. <laughs> if listening if, to freaking Paul Maurice <laughs> talk about making adjustments and, and I get it now, and this is how it should be is like listening to freaking Biden say, well, I'm changing people's lives. Things are really bad right now, but I've been in politics for 50 years, dude, you've been here. You haven't won anything. What the fuck are we never supposed had, to never had had no, like There's 11 that. coaches that have won since the salary cap era, 11. I think, or maybe even less that have won the cup. Yeah, so if we're right. just basing that off of everything, um, uh, some of those coaches aren't available. Some of them are already still with their teams. So how many of them are available to be, to be able to be brought in? So I just, I think I've been I mean, seeing like, that on Twitter and I don't buy that. I'd rather I mean, get Jeff, a maybe Jeff. than a proven loser. I, I, think we, I think I can sum this up very, very simply. Did anyone of the seven of us think that the Panthers played soft last year in the six game series against Tampa. It was the oh, hardest series no. fought. No. The- Did no. everyone agree that the Panthers played soft against the four game series versus Tampa? Yeah, of course. No. There was a significant no. difference between last year and this year, the head coach. Thanks. And for me, oh, that's no. the no brainer. So no one was injured. Team played soft against Tampa. Anton Lundell had his tonsils out. I think that was it. Do, that was all that we had. No injuries this year. Before? None. No one, no one, was, one injured. was playing injured. Correct. They had, they have Tampa point. just mopped the floor on their way to the Stanley Cup finals with everybody, but we're the only ones that played them soft. Oh, but remember their regular I, I don't think we played them soft. Good. It was two close Boy, games. Do you think it could have easily been two and two? The way I don't the think we were that soft on them. Backwards. Do you guys think the way the refs have been calling it this year, that's why we played Tampa softer? Because remember, like everyone says, well, playoff hockey starts, you could literally – Beat someone over the head with a stick, and maybe they might call it, but probably not. No, they were definitely they had a big they, they were watching was that a council Super this Bowl. year with Connor McDavid, and the game was officiated a lot different. Go watch how it was officiated with Connor McDavid and the Jets, and then this year how he played with the Kings. It, well, there was a lot different. of naming officials here in the playoffs. Um, 
on your point there. I think a lot of people pulled off the gas with physicality, but like, I mean, the physicality I'm talking about is like someone like breathed on Barkov and he accidentally lost the puck. Like they didn't even touch him. Like that's like the softness and the drive. And like, that has to do with motivation. It goes back to captaincy. It goes back to coaching. And it's just like, it's pathetic. Barkov should have never been the captain. Well, that's Barkov, one that's thing. A different, <laughs> that's an entirely different video. Yeah, but that, <laughs> I got my it ass ass unanimous. It might be unanimous, <laughs> though, that we all agree. I got my ass kicked on Twitter when yeah. I said Barkov is not captain material. Sometimes your best player is not your captain. Right. And I, I, got I, my I, I was there with you. I said it. No, you I said Trocheck, good Branson, but people don't like that. I would that. have said Eckblad or Trocheck at the time. I, I, I said Trocheck. I wanted yeah. Trocheck. I, I, I like the guy. Once Trocheck the didn't get the C, he turned into kind of a whiny bitch and didn't want to play. He, he was about as motivated as yeah. our core was during this playoff Early. season. But he also had injuries. He had serious leg injury and stuff like that. He wasn't the same after that. And you, yeah, it was yes, two that's years. That's right. Yeah, he I came can, back I too I can give him a year, but. He came back two too years. Early. You're complaining about, the and then playoff. magically he's that good when he goes to the, to Carolina. I don't buy it. He didn't want he to be there. He didn't get along either. Right. That, was that, that got publicly said that he even said on on uh, the missing curve and pro, pos, missing curve and podcast that him and Q they didn't they mesh heads. Right. He talked to them on there with Scotty Upshaw. He he said that it just wasn't a fit. Yep. And then Scotty Upshaw wasn't a fit. <laughs> you know, people I, I, we all podcast, remember those days. <laughs> people come in that podcast and they, they talk the truth. I mean, I, it, it's a reader did. podcast, but they do loosen up and they do. It's kind of like being on Howard Stern. They loosen up and they and they start talking. Sam the Bennett, truth. I'm, I'm in the market. Stern's you, still alive. I'm in the market that Sam Bennett used to be in, and uh, he's loosened up a lot in Florida. Yeah, right. interviews. He's not as guarded, and when he's speaking, so um, it's all the sunshine. Paul Maurice had that. Paul Maurice is no longer in Winnipeg or Toronto. He's in a different market now. Maybe he can breathe a little bit. Right. I blame the lack of cool facial hair for the playoff losses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Paul Maurice can go to a couple strip clubs. Mine included. This is the best I can do. It's it's really because they didn't put Fortin in for early, earlier in the series is, is really really what it was. I, I would love to make Butcher the captain. I, I would personally. That's the oh kind of guy oh I would God. make him. I would make him captain. That's that's the kind of captain. I will relive my television to the trash can. I think I think Gudis is on the trade block, ain't he? That's what I've seen. got one year left. So I'm I'm just wondering with his age yeah. and window. Like half yeah. the team has one year left. I mean, <laughs> the, the number of guys the coach that... has one year left. <laughs> right. One to three. <laughs> or he's walking. Yeah. He, he's either gonna <laughs> quit or get he's gonna he's either gonna quit or he's gonna do really well and get fired. Well, well look, the two ways to get out of Florida. I don't, I don't know if we come out nine and zero like we did this year, but I mean, if we start like five hundred, I could definitely see that. You know what's going on, kind of thing. Because right, now he right. has stuff on his plate. Because a lot of people are like, "Oh, you did, you did Bruno dirty, and like you could have just like you guys are saying, you could have just brought Bruno back. He he learned. Now he's just going to make those adjustments that he didn't do. I I, I, I I hear that side. That's the problem with people making opinions on the Panthers that don't actually watch the Panthers. Like yeah. I'm not trying to throw shade at certain YouTubers, but there's people that made videos and they're like, "Oh, you, you get him!" It's like, did you watch us? Did you no, watch no. us go one for twenty? Did you, you watch our not care? Yeah. Did you did you watch our defenders make like cr uh, critical mistakes? Like like the, I, it does I, I, I fall love some Bruno to come back. If Bruno came back and made the adjustments, like let's say he got hired and he just came out of the gate swinging, then I I have no problem with being like an idiot. But I understand being like. On Zito's we're song. all idiots. We're Panthers yeah. fans. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> no, now yeah. he's a Penguin. Like, like, like Josh says, it's rolling the dice bringing Brunette back. And, and as the offseason wore on, like that, that optically, that's just worse. And then you're going to bring him back? Or are you going to bring him back with his improved assistant staff? I just don't oh. see that going into the season. Being I did see that the, uh, the rumor of the, the Winnipeg assistant coming down here, and a lot of the Jets fans were upset because they actually liked him. I don't Friends know his name, but... It was whoever his number one assistant is was in Winnipeg. I, I don't know anything about him. I, I see saying we're rolling the dice, bringing Brunette back. That's great. That's a maybe. But now we've rolled dice that we know are going to come up as garbage because the guy's got a 400 winning percentage in the playoffs. So we've we don't, we don't guys know that. Yet. Oh, he hasn't had right. this team yet. Up being right, but, but we don't he's also been the Western I Conference would love for it. I would love for us to get 82 and 0. He's been to the Stanley Cup Western Conference Final. He's been to the Stanley Cup Final. Two conference finals in 27 years. 
Then you put well, the wasn't he once in the wasn't he once in the Stanley Cup Finals itself? Yes. Yes. He was then once he, in the finals and then twice yeah, technically lost in the finals. I'm gonna look up uh, something while we're finals. doing this. It was like in 2002 or three or something when he was in I the thought conference. Kirby put up a stat earlier of trots. Didn't you, Kirby? You put up something on Twitter of like trots was ass for like a bunch of years. <laughs> And then yeah, uh, well, like, and, and people are saying, well, he was with a franchise with Nashville, uh, expansion franchise. Well, he still got all those years, like they still stuck with him. And then he went to Washington. He didn't turn it over magically there. Was it like his set third season or something like that? Anyways, he won at 55 years old, the same age Maurice is at right now. But everyone's looking at hindsight, what Trotz has done with Washington and now what he's done in New York Islanders. Besides this season, um, that's kind of went off the rails with COVID and wow. them having a new arena and starting many games on the road. But like outside of Trotz, like you even look at th that example, he didn't win till he's 55 years old with I 19 just, years into the league. I so just don't see this, this whole people... Maurice narrative. I don't buy it. I don't buy it completely either because Nashville wasn't making the playoffs. They didn't get to the conference finals for many years. They only got to the first second round. Jeff, if you look at his numbers early on trots with Nashville, they probably look similar to Maurice's. So, and that Toronto Maple Leafs team, they weren't ready to win. It was poorly. Yeah, but Barry Trotz hasn't been doing it for 27 plus years. That's the problem. We have a bigger you assessment. Assessment. How long? Doesn't that show that you're a good coach? Doesn't that show you're a good coach and you've been hired? I just by don't see it how you something. can say <laughs> that Bruno skated by the regular season on the team's talent, but they failed. The team's talent failed in the playoffs because of Bruno. But we're not. Yeah. But me and Timmy aren't saying they, it's not, the players aren't accountable. We're saying because the right. playoffs is a and whole different animal. It's right. a different system. That that is use. the most cliche it, thing to say. Other than the yeah. word obvious, Alan Barkov cannot run up and down, and Huberto's uh, 360 passes are not going to work in the playoffs. That it's needs to be on the coaching where the coach needs to pull him to the side and be like, Hey, stop your bullshit, you're getting benched. That's that's what should have happened. We I, don't, I don't understand. I love to see the reaction. Hasn't gone far, Edmonton, till this year hasn't gone far. I don't understand how that's cliche. You look at the roster and you're like, Things need to change here, you need to play a different style. Um, I think the, the Edmonton Oilers, their leaders, they started to play more of a two-way game and bought into what the coach wanted to say. A coach that's been in their system and their minor league system for like 10 years. So I don't, I don't think we're just the only one in that, in that realm, in that ballpark. The, Kirby, the, didn't, didn't Trotz change the way Ovechkin played? So uh, they told him, listen, you, you know, you're, you're getting a lot of points and goals, but if you want to win a cup, this guy have to have to play. Didn't he, Trotz play a large role in changing how Ovechkin played in the playoffs? Great, so we got to wait until Barkov is 43. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to suck. I'll take, I'll take no, one man, one. you know, that's going to be Lundell. <laughs> Lundell's going to put some weight on him. I'm, I'm, I, that, that, that's, that's the dude, because he's got the swag. I want to sign Mason Marchman back, but I don't know if I want him at the money. That's yeah. yeah, that's good. That, that, that's a whole nother week's worth of videos is, is just March the number of decisions. The numbers that, of things, right, exactly. The number of things that we're going to, our, our, our bottom six is going to be all jacked up next year. Yeah, well, look, we're going to have to have some young kids <laughs> My come bottom in bottom six play, is jacked know? up right now, Timbo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and Jeff, like Jeff's going to lose his mind when Maurice brings in certain pieces on that third or fourth line, I feel. <laughs> that are Maurice you know, type guy. Like wait, wait, wait. What's a Maurice type guy? Because I'm always um, a fourth line grinder type Matthew of guy. Matthew Perot was in the past. Thornburn, these type of guys. Thornburn's kind of like a Lomberg a little bit. Don't always go by. Yeah, I'm hoping Lomberg is a fit for um for definitely for Maurice because I can see that um definitely. Playing yeah, out. and not only that, I I, I just spent two hundred dollars on a Lomberg jersey. So oh, he's, 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 gone now. Year left. he's gone. You think uh, he's got enough? We, we just extended he's got another, him. No, he has another year. He's gone. Yeah, if Lumber, he bought the jersey, yeah. he's gone. Unless they oh. ship him. Unless they ship no, him. I'm going to put a C on my Lombard jersey. Is that going to help anything? We need Jaws to say that our coach is going to suck. Oh, he's going to fix it. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that you're didn't right. work with Uyghur. <laughs> work as with soon Uyghur. as you say and he's dog shit. <laughs> Jaws, you're very good at this. Tie in all of our thoughts that we've just had over the last hour. How would you? How All would you right. leave that into uh, together into into uh, a, a a beautiful picture? Wait, there's other people here. I I think that in everybody's own way, everybody is right. There's 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 so many moving parts to all of this, and I think what Zito's looking at is. A little bit of what he said in the press conference today, where he's he's looking a little bit 
into the future and, and kind of seeing a lot of the different changes. And like he was saying, the challenges that, that we're going to have. And, you know, I, I like I said, I, I get the idea of, of brunette deserve to, to stay and, and have another, and, and in a, in a, in an emotional sense and a, and a, what he's done for the franchise and, and him keeping the ship right when we, when, you know, I mean, that part I agree with because in many ways it's a dual edged sword because the truth of it is, is that his job when he took over was literally not to change anything. And, you know, they, he talked about it towards the end of the season where they've been, you know, they made little changes here, little changes there. I, I, I think that, you know, it was, it was good to hear him say after the playoffs that, you know, he recognized maybe I stuck with the power play thing a little bit too long. Maybe, you know, he, he, he's, he's going to be a good coach if he wants to be a head coach. And I think that's the biggest piece that's out there that none of us really know. We only can go by what he said that day, you know, in the exit interview was he needed to talk to his family and see if they were up for it. That to me, the, I, the thing, I mean, if you think about it, if that's what he's willing to say publicly, he's already had discussions with his family and it's an unknown for him at that point. He, he did not come out and say, I'm ready. I'm definitely, you know, we've talked about it. It was, it was still in question for him. So when I look at it all together and like you guys have said, Kirby, especially about, you know, this is now Zito, this is now on Zito's plate, right? You know, he, he, he didn't hire Q. He, you know, as far as we know, when they went to talk to Bettman, they, they brought, I think, I think um, Caldwell and Zito were there trying to get Bettman to, to negotiate some sort of settlement wouldn't bite. So I think that to, to wrap it all up, I absolutely understand the, idea of of wanting bruno to have stayed because he deserved it and he was a real rock for the franchise at a at a really shitty time Let, let's be honest you know what i mean it better than row and horror jack right yeah. right and, well, i mean and, not, let's it, cut you off real quick but but yeah i mean that to answer that that's totally we we could have gone down a dark end because he right. you know what i mean that that replacing q could have gone sideways totally could have gone just ass backwards we could just suck you know i'm going to use an analogy here but it's it's kind of the truth when 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 people would ask me why i was okay with matthias leaving i said you know sometimes you 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 gotta be honest about what your future is and make the hard decision now that's going to suck now but be better in the future now i know I thought you meant at, Sean at, Mathias at, for a at, second. Aren't oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know that when the dogs are gone, I'm going back to Florida. And if I would have fought to keep him here now, then what happens when I'm ready to go? What if my ex doesn't have the opportunity to leave? So I didn't like it, but I knew for the long term that was going to be the better decision. And I And I really feel like, this was the better decision for the long term because if you, if you keep brunette and he doesn't work out you you you've got to give him two or three years and it's they had the already decided when they right what's that it's the worst window to give it to him right now because this team has never been in this win now right right and and when the owners and everybody they had already decided that this core needed an experienced coach and that's why they went out and got q and I think that at the end of the day, what, what Zito and everybody got together is said, we already made this decision that these guys need an experienced coach and they didn't want to have the whole thing that happened with Q change that decision on them. So I, I think really in the end, this was about them sticking with their original plan. I think they had already kind of figured they'd gone through the, maybe this guy will learn process with Bugner. And, and that's when they brought in Q. And I think to, to, to end it, I think in their minds, this is them sticking with the plan that they originally had. So that's my thank take. You so much. Thank you so much for having us on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. This was good. Steve told me that disagreeing, disagreeing makes good content. So this should be fun. 
It's a good mix. See, but if you disagree like this on Twitter, everybody thinks you hate each other. Oh well, yeah, no, you gotta craft it. You gotta craft it really. Yeah, I had to, I had people were messaging me. Don't you hate that guy? And I, that's why I, I, I tweeted Jeff. Jeff, I love you because <laughs> I had people were messaging me. I, I mean, do you like do you really like this asshole? And I said, yes. Yeah, <laughs> me, me, oh me and Jeff God. fight all the time. Me and me and oh. Jeff were just fighting yesterday. That's, oh, all. that's yeah. the whole idea of sports. What I mean, we all just nodded. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I wouldn't right. change Jeff just because I don't agree with his opinions. Me, me, some guy joining on a chime of me and Jeff like six hours late, and me and Jeff were like, Dude, "We're done here." Like, right. yeah, we're, yeah. It, I ended up having to block that guy because he just wouldn't be it boring up. if we just all agreed. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I, I love arguing with you guys. It's great. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys. Really, really appreciate it, everybody. Thank this, you. This was a Thanks lot of fun, and um. I'm sure it won't be long before we're back together again, doing, doing something fun. If it takes till the beginning of the season uh, and there's Ratatouille. Oh, Jesus. To close I gotta it go. up. There's Ratatouille. <laughs> I got to go. Your, Ratatouille's back. Just beautiful. It's, Keep that it, hat on. It's, you look better. It, you look like I half knew. Robert. You look like way. Robert Palmer in a Ratatouille costume. <laughs> <laughs> Addicted to love. Yeah, exactly. All Thank right, guys. One, Thanks, one last thing. Oh, one last thing. Go ahead. Sure, fam. I know we don't all agree, but I would like nothing else to be proven wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll amen, amen. See y'all exactly. opening night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, for the support, Thank and you. we will see you again sometime soon. <laughs>